Every year as a kid, my uncle got me an underwhelming Christmas gift. I prepared my fake smile in advance each time I grabbed his present, and always thanked him profusely. After years of this, 1994 rolled around, and I saw his gift in the corner. It was the same size box as last year's boring board game, so with my expectations set and fake smile ready, I tore away the paper. To my surprise, there was a Sega Genesis inside, and I proceeded to freak the fuck out and give him the first genuine thank you of my life. I thought I knew what I was getting with What Remains of Edith Finch. I have played Everybody's Gone to the Rapture, Gone Home, and Firewatch, so I know what to expect from a good walking simulator. As I started playing What Remains of Edith Finch, it looked like previous year's games, but like Christmas in 94, once I unwrapped it, I was blown away with what I found. What Remains of Edith Finch walks you through the 100-year history of the Finches. As a late member of the Finch family, you return to an abandoned house you lived in as a kid and you explore its contents to find out what mysterious events happened there. The house is chock full of interesting items from the dozen or so people who live there, but more importantly, every time you enter someone's bedroom, you flash back in time to relive a memory from the past through their eyes. Although it's nothing new to play through a flashback, the way it's executed is what makes this game so unique and amazing. It's tough to explain why this mechanism is so effective without spoiling anything, and even if I tried to spoil it, I wouldn't be able to do it justice. But I will say this, each flashback is a tiny storytelling masterpiece within the larger narrative. There's more to it than finding out what happened. There's even more to it than connecting to the characters, which it does an excellent job of, by the way. The real joy comes from how you experience what happens. The flashbacks are so novel and creative that all eight of them are burned into my memory, and I doubt I will be forgetting them anytime soon. I know that's not the most convincing justification, but you'll just have to trust me on this one. In addition to the story, the environments look fantastic. The house was occupied by crazy family members from three generations, and you can tell just from walking around. Every room is filled with tiny details that tell you about who the person was, and each new bedroom you enter feels like opening a treasure chest. The outdoor views are beautiful, and even the on-screen text adds a layer of depth as you're able to physically interact with it. It's very clear the developers put a lot of thought into every piece of the world, and even the pause menu is a creative depiction of the family tree. Combine all of that with a perfectly eerie and sentimental classical soundtrack, the one you're hearing now, and it's very easy to lose yourself in the beautiful moments it orchestrates. It's tough to find faults with what remains of Edith Finch. Walking simulators only have a handful of elements to be judged, but each one is executed flawlessly. Some have said it's too short at just around two hours, but I disagree. This was a perfectly crafted experience with no filler, and I was very sad to leave it. Better to end it on a high note than let it lose its impact by dragging it out. More games should have the courage to do that. Every once in a while, a game comes along that changes how you fundamentally view video games. Dark Souls changed how I view combat and level design. Persona 5 changed how I view character development. And Breath of the Wild changed how I view open world games. Each of these games became the gold standard to which I compare all similar games, and now there's a new member in the club. What Remains of Edith Finch has changed how I view interactive storytelling. If you enjoy a rich and creative storytelling experience, then What Remains of Edith Finch is an absolute must-play. It is the best game in its genre, and you will not be disappointed.